Hey everybody, Kronos here with another Was on the Simulator Battle video. So this time I'm going to take a look at the Spitfire Mark IIb in a few battles versus the Japanese. Now that's not actually a plane I had on the agenda to make a video about anytime soon, but yesterday when the new 1.51 patch came out, which I will talk a little bit more about later when I had time to properly test it, I was looking for the new Enduring Confrontation mode, but it seems it's going to be a few more days until we can test the new game mode. However, I did not know that at the time, and when I could not find the new mode, I hopped into a SP battle in the Spitfire, checking if they maybe for some reason just put the new game mode there, you never know. They did not, but I figured when I'm already here I might as well work on making a video about this plane. So let me give you a quick overview of the Spitfire Mark II B before we take a look at a few battles in it. Now the Mark II is still very similar to the Mark I. The Mark II has a newer version of the Merlin engine, but since the Mark I in Warsunder also runs late engine settings with one of the octane fuel, the horsepower the two put out is pretty similar. The Mark II's engine is rated for slightly higher altitude, that's about as far as the difference there goes. The Mark II also has a stronger structure, which also makes it a little bit heavier. It can take a few more G, but turns and accelerates slightly worse than the Mark I. Overall, the Mark I-A and II-A are pretty similar. The Spitfire Mark IIb, however, is a favorite of many players, and understandably so. It is the first Spitfire in Warsana that has a cannon armament, and therefore giving it a pretty good hitting power. But still being an early Spitfire, it is also very light and retains the exceptional maneuverability of early Spitfires, giving it a great mix of firepower, maneuverability and speed. Now this maneuverability of course means the Spitfire in general, and the lighter earlier marks especially, are great fighters in the defensive. A trait that was also recognized by the opposition. This for example a short anecdote from Adolf Gallant's book. During the Battle of Britain, Göring supposedly asked his ace pilots what they would need. Some said, for example, more powerful engines for their planes. Gallant, on the other hand, supposedly answered a squadron of Spitfires, which did not make Göring very happy. Now, that little story is often quoted out of context to prove that Gallant thought the Spitfire was better than the BF-109, which is not true, as you can also read in his book. His comment was more meant as a protest for the fact that at the time the BF-109s were pressed into a job they were not very well suited for, and the Spitfires could have done better. And that is close escort for bombers, where the BF-109 had to slow down to stay with the slower bombers, which put them in a situation from where they were vulnerable and could not really do a whole lot, since the BF-109 is more of an offensive fighter, which needs speed to be effective. The Spitfire, on the other hand, while also not perfectly suited for the situation, could have done better in it, since it is much better in the defensive, and even when attacked while on slower speed, it can still use its maneuverability to fight back. That is what Gallant meant when he said he wants a squadron of Spitfires. Now, that maneuverability advantage in most cases when it comes to the Spitfire means its low wing loading and good turn rate. The Spitfire most of the time could simply outturn its opponents. So when the Spitfire pilot saw an attack coming, he could often simply turn out of the way with his opponent not being able to follow, at least not right away. When fighting the Japanese, of course, you will however run into Zeros, which turn better than you and will be able to turn after you. That means even in the Spitfire you want to try to keep your speed up as much as possible, since the Spitfire can't outturn a zero. In that matchup, you're more of an energy fighter, using the higher energy state that the Spitfire can build up thanks to its higher top speed. Keep in mind though that the zero, and to a lesser degree but also the higher boozer, thanks to their light weight and decent bar to weight ratio, are very energy efficient in turns, and that makes them very good energy vampires. If you dive down on a zero with an energy advantage, for example, and the zero maneuvers, and you pull some heavy maneuvers too in an attempt to get a shot at the zero, the zero will most likely lose less energy than you in that and can use this to equalize the energy pretty quickly, and then you are at a disadvantage. In such a case, it is often better not to maneuver, simply pull up and come around and try again. This is true for most planes when fighting a zero though, not just a Spitfire. It is easy to build up more energy than a zero with its light weight and slow speed, it simply can't get that much energy to begin with, but keeping that energy advantage is a bit more difficult. That's a trap you see pilots of good turners often fall into when fighting the Japanese, losing too much speed turning after an opponent and suddenly being low and slow with a zero on your tail. When there are zeros around, it is always better to keep your energy high, as the usual fallback plan you always have in a good donor like the Spitfire, just use your good low speed maneuverability, won't work that well in that case. 
However, the Spitfire on top of its turn rate also has a very decent roll rate, unlike the Zero. Something you can use to make it very difficult for an attacking Zero that is already close to get a shot at you. Using your roll rate you can often at least stay alive for quite a while against the Zero on your tail if you don't have the speed or altitude to simply dive away, until help arrives or maybe even achieve an overshoot. Just don't try to straight up turn with a Zero behind you because that won't do anything. Now armament wise the 2B has of course two Hispano cannons, which pack quite a bunch, but have only 60 rounds per gun, so they do run out fairly quickly. And four 7.7mm machine guns, which does have received a bit of a buff in the latest patch, and now do quite a bit of damage too, at least with the tracer belt I have used in this video. Well that's a bit of an overview of the Spitfire 2B, let's take a look at a few fights in it. This match takes place on the Guadalcanal map and I joined in progress. Someone called for assistance from the shore and as I got there it seems other friendly fighters react to the call as well and there's a fight going on here. I can spot a few friendlies going after a Japanese fighter but at first I can't spot another enemy plane, so I climb above the furball to provide cover. If another Japanese plane comes in to attack a teammate I am in a position to hopefully intercept him before he can do too much damage. Now the lighting conditions are pretty poor with the sun being quite low, that makes it harder to keep an eye on things. As I look down at the planes below me, one of the planes below me looks like it has a green camouflage and might be enemy and I point my nose at it to attack, but as I get closer and I get a closer look at it, it turns out to be a spitfire, so I go back up and continue to circle above the friendly planes to provide cover. However, the next time I look back I can see another plane joining the fight and this one is firing the typical orange traces of Japanese planes, so this one really is enemy. And I slot in behind the newcomer, it is a J2 Raiden, a very dangerous plane at this tier thanks to its superior speed, however not the best turner around so I can just go straight after it. When the Raiden turns hard to get a shot at the friendly plane I follow, then do a bit of a high yo-yo turn and eventually get enough fleet to fire and I fire a burst, which hits the Raiden and sets it on fire. I keep an eye on the Raiden for a second to see if it goes down and it does, and pull back up to get above the fight again. But as soon as I look around again I can see another enemy plane, a Zero, turning after another friendly plane. I turn around and hope I can get a quick shot at the Zero as it passes in front of me but I don't quite get the lead and I go after it. The Zero however turns to die for me to follow it directly, I would only waste speed trying so I go up in a high yo-yo. And I get above the Zero and then dive towards the Zero again to attack. But again the Zero turns too tight and I don't quite get a shot at it, so I go up into another smaller high yo-yo turn. The next time I come around the Zero is attacking a friendly and giving me a good opportunity to press the trigger when it gets in front of me and I get some good hits and the Zero goes down. Now I climb back up to go back to cover the team from above, but it looks like there are no more enemy fighters nearby for now and the fight here on the shore is over. However, after I have just spent a little bit of time climbing a bit and looking around, I do notice some more AA fire over the friendly fleet and I can see a few planes turning over there as well. So there is a second fight going on over there, so I and presumably most of the planes that were involved in the fight on the shore as well start to move that way to join this second fight. I try to judge the situation over there as I get closer. And at the moment I can see only two planes, though I'm sure I saw three earlier. One is chasing the other and by the color of the tracers it seems the hunter is an enemy plane and the friendly one is diving away in a shallow dive. I keep an eye on them and after a bit a third plane joins them, two of them go into a descending turn chasing each other down, one is pulling up. I assume the one pulling up is friendly but I'm not 100% sure and since the hurricane to my left is apparently going after the lower two I stay higher for now in case the one that climbed up turns out to be enemy after all. However it is friendly as I thought. So I come around looking for an enemy plane below me, it's hard to see them over the dark water in the low light conditions, so I don't see the enemy plane until it fires, but it turns out I am in good position to attack after I do. And I can take out the Zero, though I took a hit from friendly AA in the process it seems, though the damage is not that bad. However the sudden hit did confuse me a bit and I look around for a possible enemy plane behind me that might be the cause of it, but there isn't one. Now the rest of my team is chasing another enemy plane that is already damaged and from the AA fire or lack thereof in other areas of the fleet I assume there are not that many other enemy planes around. However I still want to keep an eye out. 
As the damaged plane wanders in front of me, I try a bit half-heartedly to get a shot at it, but I don't want to commit going after this one with so many other planes already doing it, and I pull up to get above the friendlies again to provide cover. And just as I do so, a higher boozer is coming in from higher altitude. So I dive down to go after this newcomer. Now, the Hayabusa rolls better than my Spitfire, but unlike the Zero, it doesn't turn better, so I just turn straight after this one in this case. I fire a burst and then a second one, but I don't lead quite enough in the tight turn and my shots go a bit short. And I don't get any hits. Now, with my cannon ammo getting low, I just fire machine guns for a bit, saving the cannon for a sure hit. As the Hayabusa tries to go after friendly plane, I get some hits and eventually one of my incendiary rounds hits the Hayabusa's fuel tank, and it seems in this patch the fuel tank can also blow up when hit by incendiary rounds, not just catch fire. So the Hayabusa goes down and with my ammo being low I decide to head back to base to rearm. When I'm done with repairing and rearming at the airfield and I'm back in the air, a new fight has erupted over the friendly fleet and I make my way back there as fast as possible. Sadly, a friendly typhoon just goes down right before I can get there and that leaves only me and one more Spitfire on our team with about 4 or 5 planes on the enemy team. A already smoking enemy plane passes in front of me and I go after it. But it turns out the second Spitfire is already on him, so instead I pull up and to the side to get an escort position over the other Spitfire while he attacks the damaged plane, so I can provide cover if he gets attacked. And as is oft the case, it does indeed not take long until another enemy plane shows up to help out the damaged one and goes after the second Spitfire, and I'm in a position to intercept. So I dive down to attack the newly arriving plane, a KI-43, as it tries to slot in behind the Spitfire. In a slight dive I can speed up and I'm behind the KI-43 and it fire position quickly and start to attack. I get a hit that damages the KI-43, but he's not out of the fight yet, so I fire a few more bursts after it, and after some more hits eventually the wing breaks off and the Hayabusa goes down. But as I look back I can see that the Zero has taken the opportunity to get behind me, so I have to take evasive action. I call for assistance to get the attention of the second Spitfire, hoping he returns the favor. Now, my plane is faster than a Zero and I could outrun it in theory, but if the Zero is too close that would also give him an unacceptably good opportunity to fire, as I have to fly more or less level to do it. I think about it as the Zero seems to fall a bit behind, but a second one shows up and this one is closer, so I decide to just use my Rolleroid to keep the Zero from getting a shot and if both of them are focused on me that should give the second Spitfire a good opportunity to attack. Now the Zero is a great turner, but its roll rate is pretty poor, which you can use against them in a plane with a decent roll rate, especially if that one comes coupled with a good turn rate like on the Spitfire. The basic defensive move I use is as almost always a barrel roll, but not a nice smooth even one, because a barrel roll alone puts more emphasis on elevator authority than roll, the Zero could easily follow a simple barrel roll and get lead to fire, but an uneven one, more oval shaped. For example, going up in the first part of the roll, when the Zero comes around, you roll around abruptly and go back down, and so on, keeping an eye on the Zero and using the roll rate of the plane at the right moment while using the elevator authority to still have the vertical element of the barrel roll to keep from passing in front of them as much as possible, as you may would in a flat scissor. Now here I make a mistake though, one of the zeros overshoots and I get a bit too greedy and try to get behind it and get a shot to maybe take it out, but in the meantime I don't put enough emphasis on my own defensive maneuvers against the second zero, so it gets a hit in and I go down. Well, that was my mistake. And this is it for this fight, let's take a look at another one. This battle also takes place on Guadalcanal. I was moving towards the island and climbing with a friendly plane to my right, a bit lower, as I can spot a single enemy plane coming from the other direction, also on lower altitude. The enemy plane goes into a head-on with the friendly plane and I come around to dive on it. The enemy plane it turns out to be a KI-44 case into a climb after the head-on, just as I arrive. I fire a burst and miss and the KI-44 tries to dive away, but I am on much higher speed from my own dive already and we are nowhere near high enough that the KI-44 could equalize the speed difference, I have to be careful not to overshoot diving after it. As we level out I am in fire position behind the enemy plane and get a few good hits when I fire and the KI-44 goes down, and after that I can use the speed from my dive to get back as much altitude as possible. After circling the area while climbing a bit, I notice a fight going on over the island on slightly higher altitude and I move there to assist. 
Since the fight is taking place on higher altitude than I am flying at the moment, I keep climbing a bit to the side as I approach, so not to arrive below the fight, but at least at the same altitude where I can attack an enemy plane, or maybe even above it. I can see at least two, maybe more enemy planes. And as I got at least more or less enough altitude to attack, I go in and try to get a shot at the Zero that was attacking a Spitfire and damaged it. The Spitfire is in a spin and the Zero is coming down in front of me and I hope I can get a shot at it as it passes in front of me, but I don't quite get the shot and the Zero starts to turn to the right as I approach and since I can't follow the turn I go up to hopefully get above the Zero and attack it from above, though I am on slow speed from my climb. The Zero though seems to go for another Spitfire below me. Now that would give me a good opportunity to attack, but I also know that I saw at least one more enemy plane up here just a moment earlier and I don't want to give another Zero a shot at me, so I keep scanning around. I can't see anything else though and I'm just about to start to dive at the Zero below me as I can see a second Zero coming in from the front of me, so I focus on that one. The Spitfire below should be on high enough altitude to outdive and outrun a Zero if necessary. Now, since the Zero came in with a bit of an altitude advantage, I don't know how a fight versus it will go, but just like the other Spitfire below me, I am high enough to simply outdive the Zero should things not go well. After one pass, I go up again to see if I can manage to work out an advantage in the vertical. It appears though that the Zero was on a bit too high of an energy level when we initially merged. It was above me after all, and I don't quite get as much of an altitude advantage over it as I loop as I would like. And as the Zero passes behind me, I get ready to just dive away a bit and gain distance from the Zero. But then I see yet another Spitfire coming in and attacking the Zero, so I decide to stick around and instead use the roll rate of my plane to evade the Zero a bit and hopefully keep it interested to give the other Spitfire a good shot, basically a drag, just with more rolling. I evade the Zero for a bit longer and after rolling around two or so more times, the Zero eventually breaks off to deal with the Spitfire that is attacking it. So now it is my turn to go on the offensive, so I start to loop around to get behind the two. When I finish my loop and I get a closer look at the two again, it seems the Spitfire has overdone it a bit turning after the Zero and spun the plane and the Zero is coming around to attack, but is giving me an opportunity for a deflection shot while he's at it. So I line up the Zero and fire a burst when he passes my gun sight. I get some hits but not enough to take the Zero out. And I can get another burst in before I have to break off because the Zero turns too tight and I get some more damage and I can see a Bart falling off the Zero but still not enough to take it out. As I look back I can see another Zero behind me so I roll around and dive a bit to evade and get some distance. Then I start to climb a bit in an attempt to get above the other planes when I see two more planes behind me. I assume they are both Zeros and I again roll around and dive a bit, but the one behind me this time was not a Zero, it was a Ki-61, which rolls much better and in general is quite maneuverable in 1.51. So with the better roll rate of the Ki-61, my evasive move that was meant for a Zero doesn't work that well and I take a hit in the wing. However, after one more evasive maneuver the Ki-61 breaks off and with my plane damaged I decide to just dive away and use my superior speed to get back to base and repair my plane. I don't run into another plane on the way back, though when I reach the airfield it is under attack by a Ki-43. Luckily I did saw him coming from a distance, so I did not go for a landing but a fake approach on the runway with the gear up. And after evading the Hayabusa's initial head-on, I turn around to go on the offensive. And I am about to slot in behind the Ki-43 that is attacking the runway when it gets hit by AA and goes down. The rest of the landing went without further incident. After rearming and repairing, I and the other players from our team on the airfield made their way back towards the fight close to one of our fleets. By now there are not many enemy planes left. After following a plane to the left a bit, I decide to check out what causing the fire to my right since the fleet should be friendly in the AA fire caused by an enemy plane and I turn that way. However, as I do that I soon notice that to my side there is suddenly some AA fire too, indicating another enemy plane and I try to find it. The AA fire to my side is getting closer but I have trouble finding the plane that is causing it at first. But then I see some traces and I can spot the attacking plane and take evasive action. The attacker, a Ki-61, passes me and climbs again behind me and I come around after him. Now, 
With the AA fire on the other side, also most likely caused by an enemy plane, I call for assistance, since I might be in a 2 vs 1 soon, if that other plane also decides to come here. It is always a good idea to call for assistance in time when you are in contact and you think you might need it, to give your team time to react. Now I evade the Ki-61's head-on, but I misjudge the closing speed and turn around a bit too soon and the Ki-61 can slot in behind me, so I have to take some evasive action. Now the Ki-61 rolls much better than the Zero and in 1.51 also turns very well, though not as well as a Spitfire. So in contrast to what you do with the Zero behind you, in this case my barrel rolls are focused on elevator authority to take advantage of my better turn rate. I come down in my barrel roll and when it looks like the Ki-61 could get a shot at me I roll a bit more and turn into it. Go back up to roll around the Ki-61 again. And with my next pass I almost get a shot, but not quite. The Ki-61 uses its roll rate and changes direction faster than I do and gets back a bit of an advantage. I see he would get a shot the next time so I roll level in the last second and I pull up so I pass above him and go back and roll around again. And next time I roll a bit and turn into the KS61 using my turn rate, planning to loop up behind the KS61 when it passes above me and getting behind it. But as it passes above me a boomerang takes it out and I start to climb again and look for other targets. After looking around for a bit I can see some tracers some distance away closer to the enemy base and I move that way to see what is going on. And as I close in I can see a Spitfire diving away with two planes behind it and they pass below me a bit to my right. So when they do so I first pull up a bit and then I turn around to dive after them. Thankfully both of them, the KI-44 and the Zero, are focused on the Spitfire and they are not covering each other so I can easily get behind them with the extra speed for my dive. I fire at the rear one, the KI-44 first and set it on fire and then attack the Zero. The Ki-44 goes down and the Zero is damaged and forced to break off and gets finished off shortly after. Now with those two down we have now the clear numerical advantage and the rest is basically clean up. So this is it for this fight. However, because I think it fits quite well here, I would like to give a little tip to new players in sim battles to increase your kill and reduce your deaths. And that is very easy to do, you don't have to learn anything, you just have to do it. And that is quite simply, don't lemming train. What I meant by that is, let's assume there is you and a friendly plane and you are chasing an enemy plane. Now what you want to do if the other friendly plane is in a better position to attack, because for example he is closer, you don't want to go after the same target if your friend doesn't need help with it. Instead, climb above him and a bit to the side and cover him from attack. Now if it is the other way around and you are in a slightly better position to attack, but your teammate does not cover you and is going for the same target you are, and let's face it, that is what will happen in 90% of the cases, you do the exact same thing as before, you cover him. Not because you are just such a nice person and you want the other guy to have all the kills, and not because you want to do the other guy's job for him out of the goodness of your heart, but because I guarantee you 100% if you start doing it you will get more kills and you will get less deaths. And I think I have more than enough examples for that in my videos, it just happens a lot. I just wanted to mention that because from playing simulator battles that is in my opinion one of the primary things that could improve a lot of players kills and reduce their deaths with quite frankly very little effort. Well with this being said this is it for this video. As always I hope it was entertaining, thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you next time.